What do you... Oh, I've just run over my toe. What do you... <laughs> okay. <laughs> Why don't you just move the cable? Wait, wait I have to. How am I going to do this? It's, it's like jammed itself into my toe. <laughs> what are you doing? My chair... What is wrong? My chair attacked me. Okay. Oh. So what I'm going to do... That makes sense. Everybody clap your hands. Uh, vegetables. I like the vegetables too, and that is my professional opinion as an unbiased person. The vegetables. Here you go. So now an audio book by Christopher Mim. You think? Yeah, I think. Okay. Occasionally. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's good to hear. I like that. I try not to. It's a bad habit. Uh, I think twice a day. I think. You know how an apple a day keeps the doctor away? Yeah. A think a day keeps the shrink away? Lol. Wait, but if you think too much, you get schizophrenic, and then you have to... Yeah, so one one think a day, not several oh, thinks. Oh, I see. Okay, just one think one day. Oh, because one a think a day keeps the shrink away. Several thinks a day, the shrinks come and play. Ooh, I like that. Okay. Hit me up with the... Uh, Jokes, <laughs> wordplay. <laughs> what I is think that? That's a pun? Beautiful word joke. It's just a pun. pun. Word joke play pun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Chris oh, and Harvey yes. podcast. Today we'll be talking about shrinks and thought ideas and thought showers. Thought showers is a good name. Um, did you know that it is no longer politically correct to say brainstorm? Mm. Thus, um, the word thought showers was invented. It's because, because the idea is that epileptic people have storms in their brain, yeah, well, which isn't even true. I think, yeah, That's I think it's it quite works. a stretch. It's more like a metaphor for people with yeah. epilepsy. But either way, people decided so, that it wasn't okay. Yeah. This was a while ago as well. This isn't even, this isn't even like a recent spree of political correctness. This is yeah. the, a while back. I don't know how seriously it was ever taken, though. So Yeah, it's a bit weird. Yeah. Anyway. I, uh, I hope I'm in frame right now. You are. You are definitely well, in frame. Okay. okay. Don't worry about it. And if you're not, then it's not that much of a loss anyway, really, is it? Wow. You know? I want to be a paper head bag man. Paper oh, bag head man. A paper bag head man. Yes, that's what I'll be like. If if my head isn't here, I'll be a paper bag head man, effectively. That can be arranged. If your head if your head is cropped, then we'll put in like a cartoon of you. Yes. Where where you should be. Yeah. There's this like this the the plank on Ed, Ed and Eddie. I'm like, I want yeah. that face. <laughs> oh, I used to watch Ed, Ed and Eddie. That was that was a long time ago. Yeah. All those years ago. <laughs> ah. Welcome to the podcast. Today we'll be talking Welcome. about... Thanks for watching and we'll see you all next time. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. It's been nice to know you guys. Um, we're deleting Harvey's channel. <clears throat> Harvey's giving up on YouTube. The end. Thank you. We're starting a new channel. Actually, I'm buying it from him. Yeah, he's buying mine. I'm going mine. to feed you all subliminal messages of doom, so hmm. I'm sorry. And th- there was a subliminal frame <laughs> which just uh, popped in there. Yeah. So if you pause the, if you go back and pause the video and look for the frame, you'll be able to see what the message was. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm really worried that my knee is touching this cable and it's going to do a little dink every time I move. Well, um, don't. Why don't you... Oh, I've just run over my toe. <laughs> why <don't> okay. You... <laughs> why don't you just move the cable? Wait, wait I have to. How am I going to do this? It's, it's like jammed itself into my toe. <laughs> what are you doing? My chair. What is wrong? My chair attacked me. Okay. Oh. So what I'm going to do. That makes here, sense. Not my Alexa. <laughs> your Alexa. Your Alexa is sacrificed to the to the grand purpose. Computer. Oh, podcastry. Computer. Computer. <laughs> All right. Alexa's not wanting to talk to me today. Dis- it disabled your computer. I would bet it would have turned on as soon as you said it, but no. Computer. Computer? I think it's actually dead. Oh, hello. Oh. Go away. Sorry, I don't know that. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know that. <laughs> Helpful as ever. Good luck, uh, Alexa. Hello and welcome to the podcast. Today, we're going to be talking about Alexa and the rise of the machines. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what are we actually going to be talking about, Chris? We are going to be talking about YouTube gamers. I.e. Hawk Gaming, what he used to be. There, that one there, you know. Who's Hawk Gaming? The, the, oh, didn't you hear about him? He's the guy who... 
made Kerbal Space Program videos. Made... He also did the Sword Art Online thing, which people seem to ask about every single video on his comment section. Mm. I don't stalk the comment section. Okay, I do. But, gamer. Ex-gamer, rather. And it's something that's really common occurrence on YouTube. Gaming, like I said, I was saying to Harvey yesterday, is such an accessible format for YouTube. Because if you're doing a vlog or you're doing something along those lines where you're the kind of the main stage and you're the you like the full frame in the whole video you have to do like room decorations and make sure that you are using entertaining body language you have a good voice you have a good face i mean ugly people as well but like my you point is you have to have is, an interesting face my not point necessarily is, a yeah exactly face. when you're playing a game you need a decent voice and you need to be playing a decent and slightly entertaining game and that game kind of carries the format to an extent. The, you don't yeah, have, the, yeah, when you make a vlog, you do a hundred percent of the audio and visual. When you make a video about a game, the game does a lot of the visual and even some of the audio as well. Um, so there's less work, kind of. But it's not really about work. It's it's more about um, how do you say it? Like just in terms of quantity of and quality of content a lot of the quality is already there because it's part of the game yeah it's 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 the content you you make less content essentially or you have to um or at least you have to meet a lower standard in order for your your quality to be as high as others yeah um because anyone can grab a mic and talk over a game like not you can't do it well not everyone can do it well but fewer people can do a vlog well and that's that's the idea so yeah, it's, it's an accessible accessible format yeah. of videos, and yeah. So obviously that's I think that's a, for a lot of new YouTubers now, and as always has been in my opinion, gaming mm. was a very popular entry point for me myself included. I tried to yeah. start a YouTube channel many times, <laughs> and it was always gaming because I could record gaming, I could do some like voiceover over it. I didn't have to have the best video. It's very, editing it's very beginner friendly, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, I don't have that many like creative skills. I don't. I mean, I've always wanted to, but I don't know how to produce music. I don't know how to produce animations and that kind of stuff. So gaming was a very accessible format. Um, <coughs> and I never had been interested in the whole vlog scene myself, you know, trying to do mm. that style of it. It, it intrigues The problem me. is, in order but, to do a vlog, like, as in, like, the pure, the way the... In terms of what vlog means now, which is, like, a video about your life, you have to have an interesting life. And I never wanted to do... More vl- fake, interesting. I wanted to do vlogs right at the very beginning, but I never did it because I didn't feel like I had anything interesting to talk about. Mm. So, whereas with games, I was like, hello, welcome to the Kerbal Space Program. Here is the interesting things that you can do in this game. And so the game provided the inspiration as well. That's another yeah. reason why gaming content is easier to make. Because this, you can do one game so many times. I did 500 videos about KSB, <laughs> yeah. you know? And the game, the game enabled that, that. Yeah. Whereas if it was just videos of me talking, then I'd have to just, I'd have to think of five hundred different things to talk about, which you know yeah. is, is a stretch. It's a remarkable how vlog channels manage to last as long as they do. Yeah. But would you? So we were we were talking earlier about um, lifetime of a channel or life cycle of a channel, life cycle, really yeah. life cycle. In the there seems to be a trend. Um, we've all we've all kind of creative endeavors, I think, especially mm. just on YouTube specifically, where kind of early experimental stage, not many viewers, etc., and then something clicks and something kind of get a spike, yeah. and then the person, the creative person, rides that wave up, but then reaches a peak point where they start getting kind of tired. Of what they're doing. Because if you're a creative person, you naturally want to do different things all the time. But if you've got to that peak, you've done so by capitalizing on the one thing which kind of got you all that interest in subscribers um, and viewers in general. And so you kind of burn out on it as it's reaching its like most money-making part. And then comes this kind of crash of like, you want to do something different, but the viewers want the same thing from you. You want like... You're feeling like guilty for not doing the thing that the viewers want from you because you know that it's what they want and it's profitable. And so there's many reasons why you should, but it's not what you want to do. And so you have that internal yeah. kind of struggle happens. Um, and then you get 
the whoa, shaky period where either the YouTuber returns to its old format, carries on doing the thing that people wants, and burns out and then crashes yeah. later and just delays the cycle. Or they proceed to the next stage, which is like, try and branch into new content and do something different and probably branch wider. Usually it's kind of a spread that they try to introduce new things. And then it gets less interest, as it obviously will. But whether you then whether it catches on and recovers and they grow bigger from there, or whether it doesn't catch on, or the YouTuber doesn't think it catches on as much as it maybe is. Because in comparison to their old stuff. Mm-hmm. Because there's like the there's like the artificial inflation of expectation, where you ride up this massive wave on a particular type of content. And then when you make new stuff, you expect it to get a proportion of that amount and not all the way back down here. So, yeah, it's whether it's kind of that, that life cycle of, of peak on something, burn out, and have worse shaky times, and then maybe recover or maybe kind of crash after yeah. that. And dwindle and stop uploading videos and do something else with your life, you know? Mm-hmm. And a lot of channels go through it. Like the other day. Yeah. Um, who was I looking at the other day? Is it CNANAS? Actually, no, CNANAS kind of still does upload occasionally. Mm-hmm. Um, but well, like, a big one from a big one was PewDiePie. Yeah, yeah. He still does gaming occasionally. Well, he's branched out now, but, hasn't he? Because he talks more yeah. and games less. But his his big thing initially was Amnesia, and yeah, he did. That's what got him. And like that was back when you know when the horror game phase was so big, and YouTubers were gaining millions of subscribers just for playing horror games and getting jump scared, but horror games even more so like at least Kerbal Space Program was creative good so horror could, game that <laughs> well, yeah so you could kind of build stuff and you could do the well, whole, it was, like, it was, it was the key thing was that it was a sandbox which you build stuff exactly. in whereas like a horror yeah. game is like linear you can only play a game so many times yeah but yeah. when he his his amnesia picked off um, he, he was always, he's always been quite like retrospectively honest about the the, the end phase mm. of amnesia if you play the same horror game over and over again you're gonna get less scared because you get used to it. And the whole so point of then, like getting jump scared is like that's the reaction that's, that people want. But when you play a game for that long, any horror game, it doesn't matter how scary it is, you'll know what to expect. You well, know exactly how the game humans, works. Like, humans adapt to things very well. And so if your content is yeah. based off of your genuine reaction, when you get used to something and adapt to it, you're not going to have those reactions. Well, exactly. It's going to so change. Then, so for quite yeah. a while, he like he did admit that he, you know, he faked reactions because... He tried to branch out and people were like, where's the amnesia videos? Where's the amnesia videos? Just kind of crying for that content. But of course it's unsustainable. And I think that's, some, like you said, that's something that's reflected in a lot of channels in the gaming community. Because most of the time, you don't get big on becoming a variety gamer. Because I, th- I think when you do variety games, like each episode is a different, like, I try this weird game with like mm. a funky thumbnail, like, ah, uh, like that. That's almost more of a vlog, in my opinion, because yeah, it is. when the yeah. games, that's what, like, that's the point at which games content matters less, mm. and it's more about your personality as you're talking over it, and those types of channels tend to free, like, they tend to free, like, think feature the cutting to the channels, video more. Yeah, they do, definitely. Yeah, like, and full screen. I think video. the channels which survive the life cycle are the ones which go through the inevitable peak on a particular format that clicks. They reach the worst shaky phase. And then they diversify and it works. And those carry on and grow like to be massive mm-hmm. as well. And the, the only reason it would ever work to diversify your content, because you have to appeal to a wide, broad audience, right? You have to appeal to an audience who are interested yeah. in all those things. And the only common thing that they'll all be interested in is you. Because you are the only common thing if around all these different video things you want to make videos on. Like gaming is quite a broad topic. Even if you diversify to different games, mm-hmm. not all gamers like all games, right? So you have to have like the personality that just yeah. works, and the like. Nerd Cubed's a good example. You ever watched Nerd Cubed? Um, I, I remember watching something, but I don't remember. I don't even remember. I don't even remember what content he grew, uh, spiked with. Yeah. Um, but he he diversified pretty well, mm-hmm. and he does like Nerd Cubed plays and like does like different games and and stuff like mm-hmm. that. So you can. It's definitely it's definitely not the case that all channels reach the shaky phase and then oh, die course, yeah. or dwindle out, but it is the case that probably the majority seem to anyway, because yeah. the ones which manage to grow on to have the tens of millions of subscribers are definitely the minority, obviously. 
Mm. Oh, I, re- I heard something the other day, actually, just as an interesting note on that. Have you ever heard of the Plato distribution? I think it's the Plato distribution. I might be saying Plato it wrong. No. Uh, in any creative endeavor. No. Plato distribution? That's not right. Plato distribution. In the meantime, while Harvey finds this, we are going to be talking about something else. Did you know that... Uh, oh, my God. Oh, my God. I should have thought of this. I don't... Um, on Harvey's desktop, there is a photo of <laughs> the Ice Skating Society, which he is the president of. Shout out to the Ice Skating Society at the University of Sheffield. At In this photo, I am looking like... I'm currently behind the OBS window, so I can't see myself, but I have seen it before, and I look very awkward. I, uh, like I can't remember what it was anyway, but to okay. save you from your your <laughs> sudden my beautiful ramble ramble everyone likes my ramble. The idea is that in any creative endeavor, you can take any currency, whether it be in yeah. money or views or whatever, and the vast majority get none, and the vast minority get all. Right? Yeah. It's. What is it? Uh, log log n, in the 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 very few get everything, and the the vast majority get nothing, exactly. and it goes yeah. like that, right? And so, you can look at you can it's generalized. You can look at absolutely any creative endeavor, which requires some amount of creativity, mm-hmm. and look at any kind of currency that you could gain from that, and it's the same everywhere. Yeah. So yeah, with all YouTube channels, like the the creators who have the most subscribers are up here and the curve goes like that yeah exactly and i think in a way that's that's not just you know there's a lot of theories to be had about like oh this is it's like every industry is just trying to push the few to the top or whatever they're all no. like terrible people. but like as a as an as a viewer if i click on a channel and it's got 300 subscribers in order for me to subscribe to them and watch all of the other content, I, I'm not sure that they're a good YouTuber. I'm not sure that they have like made it's an it, investment of your time, isn't it? So yeah. I have to go through a few of their videos, be like, oh, this is how they sound. This is what their videos are like. Okay, maybe that's one or whatever. But if I go to like a PewDiePie or a KSI or a, like a Vsauce or something, Michael from Vsauce, right? You, that's a theme now, isn't it, with us? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but you don't even need to like. If I see that someone has 10 million or 20 million or 60 million subscribers. I don't have to go through their videos and be like, oh, are they, do they make good videos? If I'm on, if I've just like been suggested their video and I watch it and I'm like, oh, that's a cool video. I'll subscribe straight away because I'm like, yeah, I mean, you know, they're uh, going to be, if you did this and you know, other people like this kind of stuff, there's lots of comments about it, etc. Yeah. So I think, I think there's just a tendency to want to go so for the higher You think channels. there's just a more willingness. I mean, uh, one explanation for that could be just that time is precious not everyone has a bunch of time to waste yeah. watching videos you're gonna like it's like market review basically isn't it yeah it's like it's like a play store rating exactly and if <laughs> yeah. like we, i if we if we translate it into like a film industry for example if you you didn't get to see the two there were two movies you didn't get to see a preview no title or poster or anything mm-hmm. but they told you that one was a blockbuster action like five million dollar budget kind of thing and the other was an indie film done by three film st- three like second year media students and they said oh it's a really good film it's, well, really, it's good really good film. though yeah give it a chance yeah. it's really good yeah which one are you going to pick you're if gonna... you can choose one movie you're going to pick the blockbuster and that's the same what i feel with channels on youtube it extends to twitch as well i mean twitch is a bit more direct because it physically pushes the ones with higher viewers to the top of the list so mm. th- i think there's comfort in knowing that other people enjoy the content that you're watching as well um, I think to some degree, but okay, I think I think you're maybe over analyzing that degree. I think it's there, but I think for the vast majority of people, it's just that the recommended videos on YouTube shows up yeah. most popular channels more often, and so you're more likely to watch oh, those yeah, videos. Oh yeah, that's like, definitely contributing as well. Yeah. It's it's not. I think it's more that than, than yeah. the former, but um, it's also it's also largely the case that small channels are either just starting out or they've been there for a while and the reason they haven't grown is because they're not very good. Yeah. So in either way, either they're inexperienced or they're bad. Hmm. Like, 
<laughs> which is which is a shame, but yeah. genuine generally, in my experience, any video I've seen from a small YouTuber where they've made really good content, they have at least like a few thousand subscribers, or at least like yeah. nearly a thousand subscribers. They're not completely just not being watched. You you tend to gather some traction if you have some mm-hmm. like decent content. Yeah, but again, that I mean, to but get it's from, a slow from process. zero to a hundred. Oh, it's zero to a hundred is like a year. Exactly. Zero to a hundred is harder than a hundred to hundred thousand. Yeah. Yeah, way harder. Mm, exactly. Because it's getting just... traction on a system which recommends videos based on how many views they have means it's impossible to get yeah. views. It's the same problem with um, with money in general. If you mm. getting if you getting any money when you have zero is impossible. Mm. But getting more money when you have some isn't so hard. Like, being homeless, like, the whole difficulty of homelessness is just that yeah, they can't yeah. get any money in the first place. And so they have to beg for it, mm. and that doesn't work. Not well, anyway. Yeah. Um, but that's, that's a topic for a different time, anyway. <laughs> but in okay. general, yeah, uh, we were talking... So, life cycle of gaming channels, yes. right? Um, so, what do you think... What do you think is the way... So say it's this, there's a beginner YouTuber, starts making YouTube videos. To you, who want to make YouTube videos, what would Chris's gospel be? Mm-hmm. To avoid the... Uh, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah. What would... That. The, the specifically um, the... Uh, 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 that. I don't know. I suppose my experience with having tried like doing some gaming videos and... Tried like oh. single game streaming as well. Yeah, because you told me recently that you went all out on game streaming yeah. and burned out in, yeah. in no time. I think I'm a bit of an exception, for, but I tend to get bored of things faster than <clears throat> excuse me, bored of things faster than the average population. I think because as soon as I do anything for like a week, I'm like, oh no, I can't do. Anything. I don't think, I don't think you get bored faster. I think you probably get bored of the same amount of time spent on that thing. It's just that when you do something that you maybe, spend yeah, hours I, doing yeah because like, i could like yeah maybe yeah I just you just get, like, binge it basically whatever. um hmm. but the i think the the main thing to keep in mind when starting out a gaming channel and i know this kind of sounds a bit morbid and a bit sad um but it, it's true because I, like i've read tons of articles before i get to it i've read tons of articles on reddit just from my own interest about mm. people saying like, oh, why, why is my gaming channel not getting anywhere? You know, I've been, I, I stream four hours a day. I put on YouTube videos. They're such good highlights, man. I do all the where's social my, media where's, ring. Where's my fame? Where's I've my got money? my Twitter bot. You know, exactly. <laughs> <clears throat> and people are just like, well, I mean, what's special about you? Yeah. Like, like as, as a put, you know, you've got your little webcam here and you've got your little game here. Um, and you're talking to the camera, and you're playing the game. You're average at the game. You're average. At, your voice is average. Your personality is average. But there's like ten million of you. Like there's ten million clones, effectively, of you starting out. So what? What? What's your? What's your? What are you adding to the community? If you're not adding to the community, you're not going to get anywhere. So if usually, you get anywhere a little bit, but you won't get. Is this? Is this there. usually the response you see on these like red, um, Reddit articles? Well, I mean, generally the response is a bit more like, "Oh, just you know, just carry on grinding and keep but, up the but, grind." But I think, as a point, as a matter of hard truth, it isn't just the grind because a lot of people say, "Oh, you know, as long as you upload and you, you stream, yeah. you'll get a following." Yeah, I don't Ollie, think that's Ollie said thing. it earlier as well. He was like, "Oh yeah, with podcasts, you've got to be consistent. It's what all the big ones do, once a week." the same time release it have a strict schedule like you gotta do it once a week i don't think that's true at all honestly i think it's definitely a contributing factor i know I, I think i think what it is is once you've got a foot in the door then to grow further from there it helps yeah and i think i think where it really helps is for you as a creator not for the audience mm-hmm. themselves because the audience watches them at any random time whenever they want yeah. to watch it right they don't watch it every week at the same time that's tv it's not internet mm-hmm. videos the reason it helps as a creator is because you need to schedule otherwise you'll lose interest yeah maybe maybe or maybe the scheduling makes you lose interest it's a dangerous game to play mm-hmm. but um we know we're starting out from ground zero I don't think scheduling and timekeeping no, matters no. at all. Because if no one's watching your videos, then what's the use in forcing yourself to make one well, every exactly. week? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, so what? What? Like, aside from the whole, like, what makes you different? So, I think you need some sort of creative thing which makes you different, even if it's like a tiny gimmick. Like, I've seen some vloggers. Um, I, it's quite a common thing now, but like, 
you have like a teacup or something in your room, which like I, I saw it on it's like one of the guys who does music. He does music already, so he's famous. But like um, he's got a mug, which whenever he makes a comment or whatever, it like cuts to the mug and someone does a little animated face in the mug like, oh, you're so stupid. Why are you saying that? <laughs> like just a little gimmick, like something that people come back for you. Yeah, you know? I think gimmick, gimmicks well, is good. It also means that if someone finds your videos twice by chance, they're more likely to remember you. Exactly. Mm. Yeah. Um, and then the second thing, like you just mentioned, was oh, 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 I've forgotten it. I've forgotten it. It flew out of my head. What were we just talking about? I think. Oh, the regularity. Sorry, regularity. Mm. So, um, as a new YouTuber, editing takes long. Recording takes long because you probably haven't figured out your softwares yet. You need to find the softwares. You need to buy a mic. You need to save up for this. Things take long. Videos take longer than when you've done it for five years. You've edited a video every day. It's gonna go like butter. Like you can just go blah, 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 edit. Even then, it takes long. It takes long, but it it's definitely something that I feel like is there's like a diminishing return after a certain amount of time. But once you do like the first year, I'd say, of mm. like regular editing and uploading, I mean, you kind of have. It's to like the same with anything that you if you practice it, you get good at yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, um, so, that's, so, so you've got to say, expect that. You can't expect to be like a genius video maker. Yeah, to, yeah. So as like a new YouTuber. With. Because people say be consistent, or whatever. But as a YouTube you YouTuber, I feel like it's more important to get that creativity, even if it means you have to sometimes do one video and then you can't think of anything. Too I would weeks say from one of I would say cons- the value of consistency is that it's practice. Yeah, that's the value of it for a new YouTuber. Because the idea is then that if you make a lot of consistent videos, you're going to get better at making videos. But that's not going to happen if you don't have some some innovative. Mm-hmm creative content of some kind yeah i think i think the way you've been saying gimmick is good i think mm. that's great because it could be something so stupid it could just be something so menial like having a mug and you cut to the mug and it does a face or <laughs> whatever that was yeah. right um but if it's something and you do it as a gimmick and try other gimmicks then something might stick and you'll just have something yeah. that might be good and chances are you won't because mm. m- the majority of people don't yeah exactly but chances it's, are you might you know it's yeah. it's it's definitely it's definitely not a, just a statistics game like you have to get lucky. It definitely comes down to creativity and skill yeah. and and patience to a degree, but also just competence. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was going to say I saw a guy, I saw a video from a guy a long time ago. His gimmick, he did like vlog kind of things. I think he went to events and made videos about events, and he might have even been like a hackathon game jam person. That might be why I watched him. But the point was, his gimmick was that he didn't talk to the camera. He commentated in post, right? Yeah. He recorded what he wanted to say. And then he sat there. And, like, the audio oh, played. So just, yeah. And when the audio was like, hmm, maybe I should have done this, he went, like... Okay. Well, he, like, so he, he, like, like acted out. Around. That's weird. He acted out the commentary. Yeah. He did, yeah, he did it re- in reverse, exactly. Almost as if, like, he's recording his head, like his thoughts. Yeah, yeah, his, yeah, yeah. He was, yeah, exactly. And that was just, like, That's cool. I loved it. I yeah. thought that was great. And so I was tempted to, like, copy it immediately, but then I didn't really have anything to talk about, yeah. so... Because <laughs> I don't usually do this. Yeah. Because... Um, and I think that why those kinds of things are important, especially, is because if you... if Like, if you look on your sub, your subscription list right now, And you go through, like, take five random channels that you watch regularly, not just subscribe to, you watch regularly. Listen to their voice carefully. They probably don't have a radio cast producer voice. Not like me. Not not many people have that. And not many people have, like, six pack and, like, like, amazing bodies or anything. Who's that that, um, bodybuilding guy on YouTube? Is always, like, the, has the six pack. I don't know. No, okay, never mind. Sorry, okay. carry on. <laughs> I, don't, I don't watch. Um. <laughs> <laughs> He's a meme. He was a, he was a meme for a while, but never mind. Carry okay. on. Okay. Um, yeah, they're, they're, most of the people you watch, even if they're big YouTubers, they're not. They're just average people like you. But I think once you have an audience, it's it's like it's kind of like with if you take physics, right? It's more difficult to get an object to move to start moving than it is to keep <sighs> it moving. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So you need a gimmick. To have people I say, like that. oh, this like guy's an, interesting. Like an analogy oh. in there. But once they're watching, it's not that hard to keep people watching as long as you then have the consistency and like good uploads, like decent uploads. Yeah, it's, it's like I was saying, but, it's the getting started is the difficult part. Once exactly, you, yeah. Because I remember, I have a very distinct memory of the very early days of my channel. Um, I went on holiday to Cornwall with some family friends 
and I started making case videos. I've been making KSP videos for a year, right? And after a year and a half, I hit 100 subscribers, I think. I think it was about a year, 100. And I remember being on holiday and telling them, like, I've hit 100 subscribers and being, like, really proud of it. And that took a year. And then 100 to 100,000 was just, like, the next year. Yeah. It, it happens crazily fast. And it happens mm. way too fast. Honestly, it would be better... Go back to, like, the life cycle of your mm. channel. It would be far better if you just grew gradually but consistently. Yeah. But that's not how videos work on the internet. No. Videos blow up. They don't just grind up. Which is why the whole grind metaphor I don't like at all. Yeah. Um, but yeah, 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 exactly. The the general idea there is that getting started and finding finding a small audience mm-hmm. is the hardest thing. Another analogy would be uh, for the Kerbal Space Program lovers out there. If you want to go anywhere in the solar system, half of your energy is expended just leaving Earth. Just really? getting out of Earth's atmosphere wow. and into orbit. That takes far more energy than going from Earth's orbit mm-hmm. to anywhere else. It takes about half, wow. is the general rule. I didn't know that. Once you're, once you're off of Earth, you're halfway to anywhere, is the idea. Okay. So, yeah, once you have, like, 10 subscribers, well, maybe not, maybe 10 is, like... You can get 10 by doing sub for sub in a comment thread. Yeah. Um, if you're that sad. <laughs> but once you have, like, like 50 to 100, yeah. you know... The, People think it's small, but that's not small. That's very significant. Because mm. that's that's like a whole school of children, yeah. you know, depending on your audience, your demographic. <laughs> and that kind of, yeah. you know, I think that kind of works. Because if you think about, if you've got 100 subscribers in a year, I think that's still a reasonable target for, like these days. Even though you have more people watching YouTube, there's there's more people watching it, but there's less chance of it getting watched the per targets, person. The so targets thing is kind of weird, isn't it? Like, but so if you have like, because if you, if you, set like targets as a new youtuber mm. um and you want to get 100 subscribers by the end of the year let's say you aim for one subscriber per video like that's pretty reasonable isn't it or is that quite because that like i mean how many videos do you, are people then expected to produce within a year to achieve 100 subscribers in um, a year if that makes sense i i take issue with subscribers in general well, because it's not a very accurate metric. It's a you mean. bad metric. Yeah. And it's what everyone bases it on. Because it's the only easily viewable, like, how big is this guy's audience? Mm. I wish there was some better metric for audience count. And I, th- I think there is, actually. I think it's weekly views. Okay. But that's not even visible to, to viewers. Yeah. So the best you can go on is... Car. Well, yeah, that's why it's all compared The best up. you can go on is views per video. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but no, subscribers I hate because I do not have a hundred thousand viewers anymore. I never, I never had a hundred thousand viewers. I maybe had like twenty thousand. Yeah. But I had a hundred thousand subscribers because people subscribe and then stop watching. Um. So, so with setting goals, if you are like a beginner YouTuber and you want to set goals for your channel, which I don't think is a good idea mm. in the first place, because you'll just feel bad when you don't hit them. And that's, that's like, you want okay. to avoid yeah. that for sure. But definitely don't set subscribers as a goal. Set views as a goal, maybe. Mm. Views per video is maybe a goal. But then but then at that level, it's so difficult. You have no control over it at all. And it's not really about how good your content is at that point. It's about how viral it gets. Yeah. Like, w- Would you th- say it's probably largely true that if you make topical content as a new viewer, you're going to get viewers quicker. quicker. Probably, yeah. So a new game comes out. Make a video on the new game because mm-hmm. people are searching for it and more likely yeah. to find you than... Yeah, because I, I think if, if, you're, if you're one of those... If you're trying to, like, get in on the games market, mm. pre, like, pre-order... If a game offers, like, you to play it one day before, pre-order it, record footage, and upload it on release day. Like, that's, like, that's yeah. topical. I feel like that's kind of... If you want to make it big on just like let's plays and playing, not like not I'm not talking about like game reviews and like more creative media formats within gaming. I'm talking mm. about let's plays like let's play a game. I, feel I think like that's. I think that's the key the in. key issue is that you need to decide what you want out yeah. of YouTube, and you shouldn't go into it deciding that you like everyone has said this. I feel like this has been said a million times, but you don't go into it expecting to get money out of it. No, um, don't even go into it expecting to get viewers out of it. 
hopefully what you do is you go into it because you just want to make videos and you just enjoy it and like you've you probably watched a load of youtube videos and you've seen like youtubers for you've watched for years and you've thought maybe i could do that and so that's why you start mm. and that's usually like the best way because because what you want is you want to be able to make videos which get zero views and not mind too much because if you get bummed out by that then you're going to get bummed out about youtube in general yeah and you're going to stop making videos <laughs> it's not going to work right mm. But um, but definitely, if you if you enjoy making the videos for for the videos themselves, and obviously you want an audience because most most yeah. every human does want an audience, then yeah yeah going for like mm-hmm. topical and trying to get the edge on the new stuff. It depends what you want to do, I suppose. Yeah. Whether you are like a topical yeah, game in general, it, it, or... it is up to yeah what what type of channel you want to build and what mm-hmm. audience you want as well. So I, oh some some more advice I've just remembered okay. kind of. This is stuff I have spent a while thinking about, obviously. Mm. Um, don't be afraid to follow bandwagons. To jump on those bandwagons. Because... What, like, so, KSI versus Logan Paul? <laughs> that'll be the title, of, the this title of this video. And KSI now it's relevant. Now that we've Logan Paul, about. guys. <laughs> now, that we, now that we've talked about it, now exactly. it's relevant. Yeah. Um, but, uh, so if you're like me, if, you're, if, you're, if you are a creative person, and you view yourself as a creative person, it's going to kill you when you don't do something unique. Because yeah. I got into the rut of like, here's KSP Space Tourism Episode 22, Season 2. And it was just like, oh, I want to die, right? <laughs> I'm just making the same content yeah. over and over again. This time we're going to move the ship from one orbit to another orbit. Mm. And it kills you. If you're a creative person, yeah, because you need to be doing something new, and the problem is that you can't move away from what you're doing into what some some you can't move into something that someone else is doing because they're already doing it. So that's not creative. You're just copying. That's like you can't make a video about that. Yeah. No, you can, because you may think that you're copying the person, but the video you make will be different because you yeah. made it and they didn't make it, and that's enough of a difference that there's you shouldn't be yeah. worried about making the same video yeah because i think it's almost impossible even if you do i mean like what what's what because pd5 started doing it and then everyone started doing meme reviews okay like, meme reviews uh, yeah well i think there's like four because then jack's films copied it and there was beef and now emma blackery who's like an old youtuber back in the day started doing it. it's like a very small bandwagon but that's starting to kind of hop up i've seen it's some kind, it reminds me well. of what ollie said about there's this youtube channel i forget the name but he uh he does like what if yeah with memes and like the one he told us about was uh if you could pick animals to be on your side in a fight who, yeah. which ones would you pick and it's like a swarm of ten thousand rats <laughs> yeah <laughs> funny well, as hell. exactly i mean like that yeah. kind of format is like it's it's literally copy paste as far as copy paste can go because you you post on your subreddit hey guys put some memes here then two days later, you go onto your subreddit, you read the top submissions, and then you're like, oh, hey, this meme, ha 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 ha, oh my god, that's so funny. Or like, oh my god, that's such a bad meme. Oh I wouldn't god. recommend meme so, reviews as a starting point. I wouldn't point recommend YouTube. it. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just using it for example, because that's like bandwagon that is, it's so uncreative, like in the word, it's, it's and it's so copi- yeah. copyable, but, but it works. They're, they're still all different. They still all have their own flavor because they're different people. That's like, largely because can't... that's largely because at that level of YouTube, you have to have a personality. Oh yeah, yeah of course. Yeah, so so but... so different people making the same video, they still produce different videos, which you'd think is yeah. obvious. But the problem is, as a creative person, you you don't think that yeah. at all. You think if someone has done what you're wanting to do, then it's not unique. Your content is shit. Go away. Sit down and make something new. Yeah, and making something new is impossible. Because YouTube has how many million of people making videos? Yeah. You can't make something new. It's impossible. Mm-hmm. The only thing, the only way you can make something new is if you, is if you create something completely original, like you, you develop a game or do some artwork or something entirely, mm-hmm. entirely from scratch. But even then, the inspirations you draw from are probably something you've seen yeah. somewhere else on YouTube. And even then, then you start setting the goalposts for yourself even further back. Because sure, you can make a YouTube channel about the artwork you draw. But millions of people have already made YouTube channels about drawing artwork. Yeah. You're not doing anything new. And so you can you can never... If you think you found something new to do, your brain, after a few videos, is going to set the goalposts further. Yeah. There's so my advice be, yeah. would be just get used to that and accept that as a reality and 
just do it anyway. Mm -hmm. Just don't, don't, if you want to make a video, don't let anything other than a good reason not to make that video stop you from doing it. Mm -hmm. Because even if it's bad, what are you going to lose anyway? Yeah. I mean, bad, not bad as in like incites hate. Bad as in just, it's just a bland video. But you've not lost anything with that at all. But you've definitely lost if you have a cool idea that someone else has already done, but you don't pursue it and make a video out of it. Because more often than not, along the way, you're going to be like, oh, what about this? You like, you might have an idea along the way. Yeah. Because creativity is not born out of unrestrained freedom. It's born out of like constraints. Yeah. And so if you copy a video idea, along the way, you'll have your own ideas because you'll be constrained. Like, I'm making a video about this. And you can't go through that process without starting. Yeah. So just start. Start. That's the advice. Start. That's number one. Produce a, like a, a bunch of crap. And just then, make crap. Yeah. And then there'll be a flower in that crap. And then that'll be your YouTube career. And then you just have to make sure not to like film dead people, um, ask people to do like horrible racist things on live. Et but other than that, you're fine. You're, you're really, really on the, the Logan Paul and PewDiePie <laughs> oh, today, aren't you? Oh, man, man. I, I am all in on the news today. Mm. Um, but... Uh, so we've covered like gaming channel, maintaining the gaming channel, starting a gaming channel. Our flatmate has just returned from Doom. Hello, Ollie. Hello, Ollie. Um, so this. Ollie, second... you're supposed to bring us food. Uh, I brought you caramel bites. Whoa! I didn't see. Whoa! You there. Oh my god! It's good to see oh you. Oh my today. god! Can I have one? You can have the rest. Oh, oh hi, Dolly. Thank you so much. <laughs> Cheers, Ollie. All right, thank you. Chris, you would you like a caramel bite? I would like this unexpected caramel bite that has ventured into my life. Thank you very much. Mmm. Oh. Mmm. Wow. This is the kind of quality content that you new YouTubers need to be making. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is creativity, guys. Mmm. Do you want a caramel bite? Oh, no, wait. You're behind a video. I can't give it to you. Mmm. Mmm. High five. Oh, high five. I'm going to need some water. <laughs> oh, me I too. Can't see. I, hate I hate eating sounds. I can't. Mm. I'm so sorry, guys. That's Harvey, not me. I'm actually... <laughs> they can see the video. I'm Unless... not a monster. <laughs> <laughs> mm. I had an idea as well. Because we're using this wide-angle camera if it works. Um, there's so much space here because of how it distorts it. So we should just have a whiteboard or something. I want to, put, I want to have a whiteboard in my room anyway. So we can draw, like, yeah, fa fa not phallic objects. We can draw nice things there. Like, like instead of drawing on here, we can be, like, a logo. We can draw we a logo. Could, we could use the projector. We could put the projector here. It's going to get super hot. Oh, my God. We could put the projector here, project it onto a wall behind us, and view what's being projected on the monitor. And then I can draw stuff, and we can look up stuff, and it can be... That would be crazy. I don't know how well the camera will be able to pick up the projector okay. seeing as the wall is so far behind yeah. us, but it's a cool idea. Gimmicks. Gimmicks. There we go. Gimmicks. Honestly, we could we should get like you know H three H three's uh plate, metal plate in the background which has his name on it. Yeah. And his podcasts. He has H three H three productions and big metal. Mm -hmm. We need to get one of those. We can get Jamie to do it. He, he can laser metal. cut he can laser cut metal, yeah. Okay. He knows a guy. I got three D printing permission. Oh, really? Yeah, there's a space in the diamond you can go and get stuff yeah. printed. And I messaged, they closed for summer, but I messaged the okay. guy. And, um, That's cool. So I don't know what to print yet. Mm -hmm. I'm going to print something. Before we end, mm. I have one more question. Sure. Shoot. Slash topic. Small topic. Mm. We'll keep it quick. It's what, 44 minutes right now. So we can do a little bit more. We tiny, can do tiny. a bit more. Let's plays. In 2013, 2014, maybe end of 2015, pushing into early 2016, Let's Plays were amazing. Everyone was doing them. It was the YouTube gaming bandwagon, and people loved Let's Plays. Mm. I assume that's when you did a lot of K KSP videos as well. Oh, no, because you, yours was a bit after, wasn't it? No, 2014, 2015 was my, my golden year. Your golden year. Okay, yeah, so during that. That's mm. when, like, really just people just wanted to watch gameplay, and people wanted to watch people commenting over gameplay. I feel like now it's maybe changed a little bit. There's less Let's Play hype in a sense that maybe. there's more. But, but are you sure that's the case? Or have you not just well, grown out of just, that content? It could just be YouTube pushing me away slowly. Like mm. if I touch on different topics, it pushes me away, whatever. Um, it might just be that you're no longer content to sit and be. watch someone. I think, but I, I am. Think... That's the difference. However, 
that's mm. why my my point of this question was is live streaming which is now super popular and twitch has grown meteoric like meteor like a meteor like a meteor <laughs> if meteors in grow popularity and user base so do you think at any level twitch is taking away the let's just watch this guy play video games and comment away from youtube because if someone full-time tw- like I don't, I don't think it's taking viewers away from YouTube. I think it's that new viewers are going there instead of to YouTube. You yeah, think? yeah, potentially. Because, because A, Twitch is more widely known about in the first yeah. place now. Um, and B, just because it, it's better for that. Because yeah. you can interact and feel like you're more on the same level. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think Twitch, Twitch will always suffer a slight, a slight drought in, in the same kind of it's got a quality, a content quality ceiling, which is a bit lower than YouTube's, because it's live. Yeah. And live content will, has always has a ceiling that's slightly lower than post content. Mm. But um, that's why I'm talking. I'm talking specifically but, about, about let's the plays, let's plays and, and, like and live the videos con- that you'd find that are like 40, 40 minutes long of mm. someone playing the game and commenting, Just talking. like minimal cuts. Because I feel like. It's become more popular to do more heavily cut highlights and like mm. cool moments, funny moments. Haha. The, prob- the problem, the problem, the problem with live streaming in general is that you have to be around to watch it, and well, then you no, watch but, the vod afterwards. That's what I mean. Because like a lot of Twitch people now, instead of doing a video for YouTube, they'll stream and mm. then they'll break it up a little bit and then upload it to YouTube. Yeah. So the let's play is a secondary aspect rather than a. Primary but most of the aspect. views still come from the YouTube videos. Do you think? Yeah. I think it's always going to be the case that less viewers will watch it live than will watch it in post because not everyone's awake at the same time. Yeah. So whilst it might take the focus away from YouTube, I think YouTube is still going to remain that kind of library. The Twitch library is not very good. If Twitch improved their post content, as in like recorded, mm-hmm. but it's expensive to do. It's one of the reasons why YouTube had like the whole kind of earnings crisis um because it's very expensive to store hd footage on servers um stuff that you can never you can't delete old things Mm -hmm. um because otherwise what's the point you know if it's only around for like 30 days or whatever then um yeah i I think it's definitely not the case that the demand for live for let's plays is going down it might be the case that that Twitch's demand has gone up with its popularity recently, and maybe demand for YouTubers not risen as fast. Maybe, yeah, potentially. My prediction is that let's plays are going to become like I'm not. I'm not. I'm talking specifically about the YouTubers who do let's plays for the, that's their thing. Mm. Um, my prediction is that that's going to move more towards live streaming because there's always going to be a live streamer who's awake at your time, like a popular live streamer. And you're gonna naturally fall into that circle with that which adheres to mostly to your time oh, zone. Oh, you um, and yeah. what was it? Was it Caffeine TV? Yeah, which is a different streaming service, a small one that's just started. Was it? Do they have the scheduling thing? You were talking to me about the scheduling thing where you can plug in what hours you want to watch streams. Uh, no, no, that's something that I was gonna do. In you were my going to website. make that. Yeah. So Chris had a really cool yeah. idea. Which was that uh, generally if you watch live streams, you're probably watching them around a, a usual certain time of day. Mm-hmm. And so it would be cool if you could find out which streamers stream at that time of day. Yeah. Because most streamers also stream at a specific time of day. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's something that Twitch could really, mm-hmm. really use. Because I would love that. Yeah. I mean, imagine, like, the the thing is, I think Twitch has such... the For me, the main downfall of Twitch isn't the delay, isn't the bloatedness... For me, the main issue of Twitch is the way that videos, I mean, like streams and games are populated on the list. They're always done from highest to lowest, right? Mm. I feel like there's so much more curation potential there. If you have like filterable by stream hours and if someone's like, let's say, for example, you're a streamer and you put on that you stream from like four to seven and you can have a button on your stream that's like, I'm on holiday. So then people will be like, oh, okay, well, he's definitely not going to stream then. Mm. But then if if someone goes onto your stream, like expecting you to stream at 4 p.m. and you're just not there like three days in a row, they'll be like, oh, well, this is obviously a crappy stream. He hasn't said he's on holiday. He hasn't said he's away. He's just not streaming. 
give them a bad rating. Ooh. And so you, you think have, like, it'll self curate, yeah. 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 I think just like Steam, like if you, I can tell a lot, e- like for me, for example, when I download a game, I know it's a very different topic, but when I download a game or buy a game from Steam, I don't look at how many people have downloaded it. Like, mm. sure, like it's viral. That's great. Like, I, that doesn't mean I want to play. Really, that's a really good, good point. Ratings, yeah. Someone could have like really few followers, but have a super dead on schedule and his content is amazing. And then you rate it by rate. You like you filter it by rating. And I can have... see. I can see that happening. I can. Yeah. Wow, Chris. That's, I think you just my... stumbled on something <laughs> great. Think that's about. Thing, you don't buy products, or games, or anything, based on how many other people have bought it. Except maybe, maybe like Amazon. This was popular with yeah, these people. Yeah. Maybe, but usually it's it's just it's rating, right? Mm-hmm. Mm, it's weird, isn't it, that that YouTube doesn't have YouTube and Twitch and any kind of video broadcasting or media content platform doesn't have channel ratings. Mm. That's weird. But even, why is that? Even on YouTube, you know, is that because it's exploitable? Like, uh, like Nine Gag know. could just come along and. Well, I mean, that's that's a problem with anyone. Like, if you rate someone, this is, yeah, I guess in a way, like if you rate someone. And you get like 50,000 views, you'll be pushed to the top of the list. So even if the rate is negative, you'll get a, like a net positive from it. Unless they say horrible stuff and you get depressed and then you stop it's a da- but, Yeah, no, it's a dangerous idea. It's a dangerous idea, but I, I kind of... It's like... I think if you if you phrased it right and, and limited it in the right way, it would be perfect. Because yeah. what you don't it's, want is, this creator is shit. What you want is... Um, this creator's good. Oh, this person said they were making videos four till seven, but they aren't. Yeah. And that's no, we want truth. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So if you say you're going to be consistent, be consistent. And ideally, if you don't intend to be consistent, then you don't have to, you don't have mm-hmm. to be. Don't feel pressured into that. But definitely, definitely live streaming consistency is far more important than YouTube consistency. Yeah. So I can see that being it's a like, thing. Yeah, instead of having like a rating zero out of five, you're such a bad streamer, oh my gosh, go home. It could be like a commendation. So I'm commendation, already home though, yeah. this is where I stream. <laughs> commendation on like, like similar to how Uber does. Like, mm. I mean, you can give Uber zero out of five stars, but there's also a commendation section where it's like, oh, I had a nice chat with them. Or, oh, he gave me a nice piece of candy mm. that wasn't drugged or something like you know so just bit suspect. just like nice little things basically yeah. um and i th- i just think because even youtube like youtube has the likes and dislikes it's got it in place so you can tell i know it's kind of it can be harsh if you put a lot of effort into a video and people dislike it it's harsh but youtube's got this amazing system and they don't even use it because it has it has not like this isn't this is a known fact it has a tiny effect on views on new views well, of course, because you don't views. you don't see likes versus dislikes before you click a video. No, well, yeah, mm. yeah, and that. So that you click on a video, you but even in terms of recommendations, if a video has got that like quite a few dislikes, you, YouTube's not going to not recommend it because if it's running in fact, ads, that, and if it's, it's got a whole, really well, if it's got a whole load of dislikes, they might even recommend it more. Yeah, because it's, it's like controversial. controversial. Yeah, so it's just like the rudimentary exists system exists, but I do, I think there's potential for more. And the nice thing about having a lot of platforms like this, I feel like. The, sh- the biggest shame about YouTube and Twitch being so dominant is that there's no space for creativity in that field. Like, if you had... I, obviously, that's just all, the way the industry works. I can accept that. But let's say, for example, we had my system for ratings. And we went with a hardcore, like, rating zero out of five. If he, if your channel is bad, you're not regular, your content is bad, you're going to be a zero. And you'll, you'll be sad. You'll be, like, really mm. sad about your channel. But... If you don't like that system, you can hop onto Twitch. It's got roughly the same amount of concurrent users. They've got a whole different setup going on. And if you like that, then go for that. But, you know, that the problem with having monoliths is that you stifle creativity. And who's going to stream on a platform? If you start a new platform, even like Caffeine, which has like, it had like $40 million in investment. Because wow, the guys cool. working on it are like ex-Apple executives. So mm. it's like people who know what they should like. What they're doing. They know what they're Ooh, doing. We should have almost had to bleep that out. Wow. Um, oh, no, I've been swearing. Have you? I don't a know bit. if we have. I have. Oh, I don't think. Oh, no. It's okay. Rated M for mature. Mm. There you go, sorted. Um, Post, posthumously <laughs> rated yeah. M for mature. Exactly. <laughs> no, I, was, so, I was just envisioning, whilst yeah. you were talking just then, showing likes on video 
previews. Because the problem with growing an audience on YouTube, going back to that topic, is that people don't really want to watch people who don't get viewed as much. And a large part of that is how prominent the view count is. Because you can see how many views a video has before you click on it. Yeah. And it's a usually a pretty good indicator of whether a video is decent or not. But what about like ratio? Mm. That's completely... You could have 10 subscribers and 9 people could like your video. But if 0 dislike it, that's a 100% like ratio. And that's good, right? Because that implies something is good about your mm-hmm. content. Because if it's only reached 10 people but 90% of them yeah. like it, then that's crazy high. So what if there was more of an emphasis on like ratio mm. and not absolute values just the ratio yeah yeah i would like that. that i would like that a hell of a it lot seems, it's an interesting concept and i think there's mm. yeah there's so much room for exploration i feel like the, the, the interesting thing is that the problem youtube has such a monopoly yeah on the video content market that no one's had chance to create a content a video content market like that and do these things differently because yeah. the ones which make content in the same way or host content in the same way are doing it because youtube's done it and youtube's yeah, super exactly. popular they, they like they've seen it's kind of so experimental way, yeah. content platforms yeah. are in are in short supply mm-hmm. caffeine's cool yeah it's got like it's got a decent like a few thousand numbers of like active users now so, which is like still small in comparison but that's mm-hmm. enough to there's enough to sustain a community now but mm-hmm. i feel like that's with so many things, it's the same. Like zero to hundred is the most difficult, and after that, people start joining things. That problem, I think, exists everywhere. Oh, it does. Um, yeah, yeah, and definitely. with streaming platforms, with video platforms, it's the Plato distribution and or whatever. It's not called. everyone has forty million dollars to blow on like mm. making a platform, with like a content platform. So it's just a, it's it's a very difficult problem. Um, but I think this might be an opportunity actually to get some viewer feedback. <laughs> if, as a viewer watching this right now, you have made it to the end, congratulations. Chances are you, you have done really well. You uh, are in the slim minority if you've made it to the end of this video. Yeah, well, yeah. we'll... we'll. I'll if, buy you a cookie. Okay, we, we can buy them cookies. I'll help you. Cookies are cheap, cookies. man. I'll buy... If you're watching this now, I'll buy you a cookie. I won't okay. mail it to you because that would be a bit mank. You have to... Uh, you're going to have to come to Sheffield. Yeah. And we'll meet you we'll, in a public place. Somewhere, yeah. somewhere public. And we'll buy you a cookie. Yeah, okay. So well done for making it this far. It's been great to have you around. But I want to know, from your perspective, if you could change something about the YouTube or Twitch, whichever one you watch more, if you could change something about the rating system, or the not necessarily the rating system, but the way people find videos. And that might be, uh, like, we, like we discussed, a, a star out of five Amazon system, or like a like-dislike being pushed more to the front rather than views. Or like a Facebook, where you don't really have negative ones. You have an angry react, sure. But, I mean, like, there's no dislike. There's only likes. The, so you can the only angry like. react is usually ironic anyway, so, isn't yeah, it? Exactly. It's sarcastic. So now, yeah, so f- yeah. from your perspective, if you could change one thing, and especially if you are, like, a beginning content creator or something, what would you, yeah, what would what it would be? you like? What would it be? We are curious. And maybe we will investigate this further someday in another podcast. Thanks for watching. If yeah. you liked the video then please like the video. Yes. Even though liking doesn't matter. (laughs) Even though it doesn't get shown, yeah. Otherwise, I'm going to feel sad and self-conscious and I don't want to do videos. Our self-worth is based on that like ratio, so... Exactly. Yeah. I have nothing else in my life to be happy of. I'm I'm kidding! Thank you for watching, everyone. It's been great to have you around. And I'll I'll comfort Chris whilst he has his meltdown now. (laughs) So, uh, yeah. Thanks for watching. And we'll see you all next time with our next podcast which will be about fluffy kittens and how to murder them bye bye